We're outside the 2024 Miami Boat Show. I'm gonna head in there and see what we can find with a $1 million budget. I'll tell you what we will find, variety. There's something in there for everybody. We've got day boats, sports cruisers, fly bridges, center console, fishing boats, and something a little bit special in there as well. It is a proper smorgasbord of boating inside that show. Let's get going. I'm Jack Haynes, welcome to Yacht Buyer. The thing about Miami Boat Show is it's split between various sites, indoor convention center equipment. There's a clock and 35, we'll film that. I'll put a link to that in the description. It's a party show as well. There's music absolutely everywhere. It's probably the noisiest show you'll ever come to, but the bulk of it's on the water, which is always nice at a boat show, right? You want to see the boats out on the water. The Americans don't mind putting the prices out on things either. So usually each boat's got the price at the back. So you can really easily drift between them and see what suits your budget. It's uh, Boat show Saturday, so it's a busy day, but yeah, you can see how well the marina layout works out. This is where you want to look at boats. Let's go and see what we can find. It's Friday afternoon at the Miami Boat Show on the cruiser's yacht stand, and it's party time, and that's very apt because these are party boats. They're designed to get out to the sandbank fast, open everything up, have fun, and then blast back again. And this one with these triple 400 V10 outboards, which are an upgrade, will do 55, 56 miles an hour. So yeah, it's got some serious pace. Back here in the cockpit, Balcony, obviously, no great surprise. Everyone wants a balcony now, but yeah, you've got that there, which is nice. Only on one side, because over on this side, you have this great seating area. This is very flexible as well. As you can see, this backrest twists around, so you can place looking out, or you can turn it sideways to make the most of looking out over the balcony. High quality machines, these. As I said, it's not an enormous boat. It's just over our million dollar budget, but you can feel the quality. They're built in the USA. They pride themselves on the quality of the fit out. And you can see that in the likes of the upholstery, the woodwork, the fixtures and fittings. It does feel like a very nice product. Over here, we've got a grill underneath here. Cooling space down below, bit of storage. Cup holders, obviously, and there's a sink tucked down over there. And I like this feature. Look at the bar stools. That's a nice place to just sit here, taking the view. There's one over here as well, and this is padded too, so you're not gonna hurt yourself as you climb in and out. Helm station, double helm bench. Again, the finish is lovely. Leather up here on the dash, really lovely soft leather here on the seats. Drop down armrests, that's a nice touch. You've got a sunroof too, canvas sunroof, so you can close this area up if the weather's not so good or you want some shade. You can fully enclose this whole area as well with canvas if you want to and another great driving position. You can sit or stand, footrest for leaning. You've got a joystick control, those outboards, triple outboards. You don't have to worry about what they're doing. Use the joystick and they'll work it out and make the boat move whichever way you want it to. Heading forward, this is all quite easy because you walk straight through the windscreen. And you've got another nice lounging space. <sighs> yeah, this is really nice. Table up here too. Speakers so you can enjoy some music and cup holders all over the place. It's very comfortable, it really is. Let's head downstairs and have a look at the accommodation. Now, day boating is the name of the game with this boat, but if you do get in the mood for staying overnight, it's perfectly comfortable. This converts, drops down to make a double berth forward here. It's all open plan, but the bed would be big enough. You've got a fridge down here, microwave, and then underneath the cockpit, there's another double bed. So kids on board, absolutely perfect to sit them down there for a night's sleep. They've got a TV mounted up on the wall as well, and a separate bathroom too. So you've got the facilities to use the bathroom, have a shower if you do end up staying on board for a little bit longer. This is fast, fun American day boating at its best. From a European point of view, the really nice thing about coming to this show is you'll see stuff that we just don't get over in Europe. Things with multiple outboards. The sports fishing scene is huge here, obviously, much bigger than it is in Europe. So as a European, you get to see something a bit different for the Americans. This might all feel a bit more familiar, but hopefully we can find a really good selection of stuff all within that $1 million budget. If you want a flybridge boat for your million dollar budget, well, look no further than this. The Geno NC1295 is $890,000. As you see it here at the show, flybridge, three cabins and double or triple outboards. This one's clearly got three and top speed of about 40 knots. It's a very well packaged boat this though, and it starts in the cockpit where on the starboard side you have a drop down balcony. You can't build a boat these days without a drop down balcony, of course. This one's manual, so it's very easy to use and it just extends your deck space a little bit back here in the cockpit. On the other side, you have a boarding gate, no balcony over there, but this does slide forward and the backrest drops down to create a sun pad, so you can make this area into a sunbathing space if you prefer, and 
there's a bit of sunshade as well as an option that pops out from the back of the overhang here. What else? Well, it's got asymmetric decks. You've got a narrow raised deck on this side. You're really gonna wanna be using the starboard side deck because it's bigger. It also aligns with the side door. Up front, sunbathing space and a little table up there. Now, before we head inside, let's go up and check out the flybridge. This ladder actually clamps up against those doors when you're not using it to give you a bit more space in the cockpit. But then up here, obviously it's not an enormous space, but it, it's well arranged. They've got room for a little grill here, wet bar with a sink and a drawer fridge down below, a seating area over on this side, and then a two-way backrest as well. So this can either form part of the dinette or you get a double navigator's bench with some sunbathing space forward. Cover is provided by a canvas bimini, and then we have a single helm seat. This is a nice position. So you've got a repeat of what we have downstairs. We'll see that in a moment, but you've got the joystick for your outboards, optional bow thruster on this boat, and your twin throttles, which control all three engines. But yeah, pretty nice position. Let's head downstairs. This is quite clever as well. If I slide this door across all the way to this side, there's then this pop-up section here, just to create a bar area next to the galley here. It's not got a huge amount of counter space inside, so that's quite useful to have that out there. As I said, it's not massive, but storage is reasonable. Nice big sink here, induction cooking, all that good stuff. You haven't got a domestic size fridge freezer, but you have got two large cooling drawers over here, which are a decent size and close to the cockpit, which is useful. Up into the middle, this is your, your dinette. You can see the TV pops up from forward there. This table actually drops right down. There's an infill cushion and you can create another double berth here. So you can sleep eight adults on this boat, potentially. Helm station. This is nice. It's quite a simple paired back helm, couple of MFDs as you might expect, some nice big switches for the stuff you're gonna use on a regular basis. And I like the fact that it's very easy to stand and drive. You've got a great all round view. You can lean comfortably. You can sit if you prefer as well, but I like the throttles are nice and high. So yeah, everything, including the joystick for the outboards is within easy reach. And of course there's the side door, which I always like to see. Makes ventilation very easy, but it means if you're on your own or a couple of you, the person driving can also help out with the crewing. It's a good position. Let's head downstairs. The accommodation on this boat is a pleasant surprise because you've got three good sized cabins, a pair of identical twins either side of this passageway. Headroom over the beds isn't amazing, but it's perfectly fine in the doorways here and there's decent storage in each one as well. And they share this day head over here. But what is quite nice is that this owner's cabin right forward, which has a lovely big double bed that's set nice and low, TV up on the bulkhead here, and again, decent storage, has its own bathroom, which is totally private and big enough to have a separate shower cubicle. The other thing I like about this cabin, natural light. Opening hatch above my head here, long windows on either side, and a nice strip of glass right forward too. It's a really good space. Right then, the D'Antonio 42 Open here at the show, as you see it, is $929,000, so within our fictional budget. And on the face of it, it looks like every other sort of walk around T-top design that we've seen from loads of manufacturers. They're a Spanish company, but the boat's a bit on Poland, but they have a major trick up their sleeve, which is this. I push this button here, up comes the sun pad. It does take a little bit while, but it's worth the wait because underneath there are three 400 horsepower Mercury V10 outboards. And the clever thing about that is, is not only are the outboards boxed in so that they should be even quieter when you're running, but it means that you get the benefit of outboard propulsion, but you still get the sun pad out back and you still get the full width bathing platform that you get with an inboard boat. The only difference is you're running outboards and you have really good access to them in there as well. It's a very unique bit of design and it just means that you get all this lovely extra living space back here plus outboard power. There's a massive storage unit in here big enough to put a folded up tender inside and then it's walk around deck so it's very easy to move around. You've got a T-top plus extending sunshade, this big dinette in the middle here, twin tables which both open up so you can sit plenty of people around here if you do want to have lunch on board and obviously that's very close to the wet bar where we've got the usual stuff of a cooktop and sink, cooling underneath, again being centrally located just makes really, really good sense. And a nice handhold as well, so you can steady yourself when you're moving around. Moving into the helm station, there are a few different outboard engine options, but those triple 400s, I think, will be the most popular. Top speed, 47, 48 knots, I think. And yeah, this is a, this is a really nice position. Triple, triple, quadruple bolster seats, but you know, relatively central position for the driver. Nice upright dash hints of carbon fibre all over the place and it's all very adjustable so you can get nice and comfortable no matter how tall or short you are. And then moving forward past this nice deep windscreen, it's all sunbathing space up there and speakers, cup holders, all that sort of stuff so you can relax and, and chill out up front. 
But another major surprise, for me anyway, was the quality and the size of the accommodation. This is a boat full of surprises. I think the scale of the accommodation down here, what they've managed to fit in is really impressive. You've got a nice double cabin forward there, sliding door, which gives you a bit of privacy, and that all feels very high quality where that slides home. And talking of that, if you slide this one back, teak laid floor there in the bathroom that's a good size headroom is great here not quite so good in the cabin but still it's pretty good and over on this side there's a fridge a bit of countertop and some storage as well but it has one final surprise in store which is a midships I think this is such a sensible use of space for an area like this, not trying to cram berths in here, make it into a chill out zone, literally a chill out zone. The air conditioning is absolutely blasting. It's lovely respite from the Miami heat that we're experiencing at the moment. But you can come down here, relax, you know, have the iPad, get away from the sun, but also there's enough space on these big benches. You know, you can lie down. You know, if you do want to have a snooze, you can convert this into a berth easy if you want to. I think it's a very sensible use of what is often quite a compromised space. It's a very clever package. Let's get back to some Americana, shall we? Because for $967,000 as shown, you can have this rather lovely Pursuit S378, an archetypal fast center console designed for performance and fishing. And the performance comes from these three things, triple Yamaha outboards for a top speed of 60 miles an hour. This area here, very fishing focused. You've got your rod holders here, bait well, rod holders up on the t-top as well and lots of other stuff to do with fishing that I don't really understand but the Americans absolutely love and plenty of open space with storage below for all of your fishing gear this seat flips out the way as well to give you even more space but there's a little bit of comfort as well you've got this seat here but this is actually mounted on runners slides back this way to create a leaning post where there's space for a table you've got a grill and sink under here as well so you can prepare your food once you've caught it too heading forward to the helm station you find a triple helm seats, all with bolster and armrests and flip and move, and you can get very comfortable whether you want to stand or sit and enjoy the ride. It's actually fully enclosed here. The windscreen meets the T-top, so you should have very good protection when you're moving along. And you can also zip in covers here as well to fully protect this area. You've got the classic Edson wheel with the knob on it, so you've got really good maneuverability with the wheel. But of course, you've also got a joystick to control those three engines, so at slow speed, you're going to be using the joystick for that slow speed maneuverability. The bow thrust is an option twin MFDs, it's very focused, very comfortable, designed you know, for travelling fast in great comfort. And talking of comfort, there is, right forward, a genuinely really nice living space up here. It's trimmed in seating all the way around, nice comfortable backrests. This is a cool feature. You've got these on both sides, these little pop-out backrests. So you can turn these into a chaise long and sit like that, which is quite nice. Not quite as nice as these though. I absolutely love these. They're like those seats you sit in at a train station to get your shoes polished, but much more comfortable. Maybe not great at 60 miles an hour, but when you're moving along slowly, this would be absolutely lovely. Down here, it's quite simple, but it's not basic. It is finished to a high quality. It's an expensive boat. You can still feel that down here. It has a separate day head and actually there's standing headroom in there. That is a reasonable size for this style of boat. And this is set up in bed mode at the moment, as you can see, but actually you can remove these cushions. There's a table under there that rises up and then you can use it as a dining space if you want to. This is the all carbon fibre Say 42 and if you want something totally different for that budget well look no further. Not only is it bright orange and all made of carbon fibre, it's a pretty serious performance machine as well. This has got the pair of 430 horsepower petrol V8s, 43 knot top speed. You can have it with a pair of Ilmors and that light's doing 60 knots. It's yeah, a serious bit of kit when it comes to performance but there's lots to enjoy on deck as well. Obviously you've got a huge amount of sunbathing space. This lifts up to give you access to these engines. They all run on stern drives by the way. Super Super slippery, super efficient, and they're very light as well. Sub £10,000 for this entire package, which is pretty good going considering this is a 42-foot boat. Moving forward, you've got a bit of protection from the little stubby T-top here, but it's got an extension of the canopy to give you some shade over the sun pad. And this is a nice space, this big dinette amidships. This whole table drops down, and you can put a cushion on there to make it into a sun pad if you prefer. And I love how they pick out the carbon fibre in places, really striking orange paint and lots of teak, but then the carbon fibre is evident all over the place. It's lovely. But look at this, this is where I want to be, in the helm seat here, in these, ooh, suspension seats, full carbon fibre, quite thin but very, very comfortable. They slide forward and back as well. They also swivel around so you can face that way if you want to. But yeah, it's a really nice cosy cockpit design, everything faced towards the driver, throttles nice and high, very low little windscreen. You don't really want to stand to drive because, well, there's no protection whatsoever. You want to sit down in this seat, let the seat do the work, but yeah. 
this feels like a very, very sporty driving position. Now it has got some accommodation, which I will show you now. I don't think you buy a boat like this with accommodation as a priority. You buy it to look good and go very, very fast. But there is a little berth down here. There is quite a good natural light because there's glass all over the place. And it has got a separate bathroom down here as well. What a machine though. Thanks very much for watching that video. That is a small selection of what you can get with a million dollar budget at the Maui Boat Show. Let me know in the comments below which of those boats you choose if you have the money. And also, if you think I missed something really obvious for that budget, let me know about that as well. If you enjoyed this, we did a similar thing in Europe with 100,000 euros and 500,000 euros. I'll put those videos over there. If you'd like to subscribe, you can click up there. Thanks again for watching. I'm Jack Haynes. This is your buyer.